They also have. The first time they take me there, driving the car on the highway. I don't know where I'm going. I was so scared. I said, maybe this person take me sailing to somebody. <laughs> Just the first year, very difficult for working as a housekeeper. The hours is start at the same 6 o'clock to the 10 o'clock. What were you doing every day? Oh, prepare the food for them to eat, and after they go to work or school, you clean the bathroom every day, make their bed every day. When they come home, you show them, I finish this, I finish that. They're happy. They say, oh, you work. You don't just sitting there, sleeping or watching TV. They don't let you like, um, do nothing. For example, evening time, after dinner, you have to prepare the food, cut piece by piece, let them eating, and after they finish, you have to wash the dishes. So it's the time almost 10 o'clock. And even they say you work eight hours a day, but then who working in the housekeeper never working eight hours, always more. I was happy working in the dental laboratory because, like I said, when you found that you had a skill, have talent in another area, and uh, I copied the things so fast. So I feeling like I have good hand to work like that. I find like sometimes in that people, not really every boss treat you equally. I don't think so. They say the uh, Oriental people working hard, so they don't care how to respect you or give you equal work. They think you have to do a lot of work. Doesn't matter. They both ask you do this, do that. You gotta follow their. But uh, some that if you are Canadian, you work there. You might say no, that's not my job. My position is here. Five o'clock, you finish job, you going home. The boss always say you clean the floor and using the vacuum machine. So using the vacuum machine, clean it, but it just stop no working. So I say to the boss, I say the vacuum machine no working, cannot sucking the dust. He said, look at it, check it. I say it's not working. How can I check? I can't fix. It. Then he said, you fire. I say what? I'm fired for the vacuum machine. I'm not working for the vacuum machine. I'm working in the dental laboratory. So the next day, the boss say, you fire. Go home. Don't come back here. I was crying and crying. And I said, OK, you don't have me. I go to another, find out another job. So that's why I, I looking for a job, different job. What's worse for? You work so hard, and the boss not appreciate. And look like you are Oriental people. They are white. I I don't know. That's my mind think. So anyway, everywhere just like that. Not just only in the dental laboratory. Okay, my name is Harinath Dishasan. I was born 21 December 1964. I originally from Guyana, South America, and I was immigrant. I was a London immigrant status here in 1986, the 9th of May. 
and um, my wife came up for a year later in Canada here as a land of immigrant starters, which I sponsor her. And um, I got a child born in 1989. We were living, I bought a house. Um, I was working two jobs as a cook, I'm a chef. You know, we live like a real family, like a back home styling. And we live better than even to some standard that some people here too, because of some people, they don't care about family here. You know, these change, the, 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 um, the North America really change people's lives. We all barbecue, have a nice time. I eat, we all eat, we packed up. We ready to go. And we three Indian guys was inside my car. I saw the police car, you know the light. Exit out of the car, put your hand on top of the car. He pushed me to the ground kicked me on my back. Then after that, he hold me down and he stamping me. And this one female officer come like this, come around this way, and take the button and strike me two times here on my left temple. The day when I was coming out from the courthouse there, the four officer was there. And one of them mentioned that we will get you back. But I just ignore them. I just go about my business. The following day, the 24th of April 2004, I was pulled over. I was charged for refusal and impaired. Refusal go on the impaired. Anyways, that case was dismissed. That's right there is mal malicious prosecution and harassment. When I see police, I get panic. You know, like I got shaky. Or, you know, I scared. And I'm on sleeping tablets, I'm on depression tablets, Respadal, Afexo, and Percocet. I took those medications, when I took those medications, sometimes my back like just give. I can't move. My everyday life is so for me, I cannot cook. I used to cook. Um, I, am, I am not here for my son, what I used to do before for my son. It's, 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 it's affect my life, rest of my life, I will be suffering. The only thing what is peace for me, that if they accept the liability, that they did it, it's peace for me. I find that um, like this settlement process, it's, it's almost like a myth. I do have some clients who have been in Canada for their entire life. They still feel that they cannot really truly call Canada their home because of the kinds of issues that they face, even 20, 30 years after living in Canada. So I think the first thing uh, we need to do is to make sure people understand that poverty is a systemic structural problem. Um, people don't just happen, you know, suddenly one day to decide, I want to live in poverty. You know, it's not, it's not a reality that you want to uh, find yourself in. It's only by recognizing that that we can start thinking about and talking about the solutions.